The Man Whore Podcast is sponsored by HotMovies.com. Man Whore Podcast fans can enjoy 40 free minutes of sexy, ethical porn viewing by signing up at ManWhorePod.com slash HotMovies. Now let's get to the show. Welcome to the Man Whore Podcast. Shout out to the pre-orgasmic gals, the pre-marital fuckers, the pre-school teachers, and the pre-Madonnas. This is Billy Presida, and you are listening to the Man Whore Podcast. All right, what is up? How you doing? Welcome to the show. I am your host, comedian Billy Presida. If you are new to my program, this is a podcast where I typically talk to women I've hooked up with about sex, dating, and why we didn't work out. However, uh, this week's special guest is not one of my former flames. No, no, no. Uh, This week, I've got on fellow stand-up comedian and sex podcaster, Remy Casimir. And I cannot wait to share her with y'all in a bit. But first, no show dates right now to promote people. No show dates. Other than the show dates that matter most of all, August 3rd through 5th, we've got Man Whore Con here in New York City. Oh, yeah. Or... Do you got the stamina for a second round? I think I do, and I am so hyped for it this year, guys. Oh, Man is going to be bigger and greater than ever before. By ever before, I mean before last October. <laughs> uh, and I have an announcement about Man Horcon. I'm going to announce another event, another piece of the itinerary, right? We've already announced that there's going to be a live Man Whore podcast recording. There's already going to be an exclusive after party, and now I'm also going to add officially... A stand-up comedy show. Yes, uh, not only, you'll finally get to see yours truly do some of the good old stand-up, and, and you'll also see some of your Man Whore podcast favorites, because as you know, I, I every month I have on a stand-up comedian just like Remy, and I, I'm going to invite some of them on to to come do some of the do some jokes. And of course, you can get your weekend pass to Man Whore Con at manwhorepod.com slash tickets is a fantastic excuse to come visit New York City for a weekend or longer, right? And then you not only get to hang out with me, but you get to meet uh, your fellow fan whores as well. Again, the link for that is manwhorepod.com slash tickets. Ticket prices will be going up on June 3rd, so you will want to secure that ASAP. And, uh, and if you're listening to this episode in time, today, April 25th, at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, we got another Fan Whore Facebook Live Hangout. So uh, if you catch this in time, come on and join us. Go like the Man Whore Podcast Facebook page so you don't miss it. All right, uh, let's get to your emails, people. Oh, you know, I want to give a brief shout out. I went, uh, last week I went to Multi Amory Live here in New York City. And if you're not familiar with Multi Amory Live, oh man, you are missing out. Uh, I had a really great time. It was a very impressive show. And it, it was so good, it convinced me to subscribe to Multi Amory myself. Uh, Multi Amory, of course, is a podcast that is dedicated to the topic of polyamory and alternative relationship models. So I highly encourage you, if, if you're interested in any of that, to go check out their show. But now your emails, folks. Emails. Uh, this first one is, uh, this. we'll start with a nice one. Comes comes from Kyle. Who, is, uh, who has recently joined our fan whore community on Patreon. Awesome. He says, Hey man, thanks for the welcome. I remembered seeing your original advertisement looking for drivers for episode 208. And I thought it sounded hot and I hoped it would work out well. And I'm happy to hear it did. When I saw your success post on the Stupid Sluts Club subreddit, Set, settle down, settle down. It's it's an empowering subreddit. It's not a an objectifying subreddit. Settle down. When I saw your success post on the Stupid Sluts Club subreddit, see, you know, try saying that five times fast, okay? Uh, I just had to check out the show. And what an amazing girl and unbelievable episode. Honestly, dude, thank you. I haven't checked out anybody in the, com- in the fan whore community yet, but just listening to your show has been amazing. Unfortunately, I feel a lot of shame about my likes and dislikes and level of drive, but hearing another guy talk openly about enjoying and celebrating how much fun sex is while still keeping values and morality in check is fucking awesome. 
Anyways, thank you, and I hope you keep doing what you can. I do want to contribute more when I can uh, spare some additional funds. I really think what you're doing is important. Rock on, brother. Kyle. Well, Kyle, thank you again for uh, becoming a member so quickly, by the way. That, is, uh, that might be the fastest track from heard about the podcast to listening to becoming a member of the community. I'm so glad you did. I'm so glad you're a part of it. And I do hope you enjoy connecting with people in the Champagne Room, our, our uh, super secret Facebook group for patrons only. Rock in. This next one's a little more ugh, just like I roll wrote worthy. Um, look, people, I I try hard to book guests that are relevant to the podcast. I try to book good guests. I try to book people that I think we're going to have a good, intimate connection, even if we don't entirely agree on everything that we're going to connect. And, you know, I get a lot of emails from like random people very often Folks emailing me themselves doing the the good old fashioned hustle, which I respect. I respect the hustle of promoting yourself or your book or your show or, you know, whatever it is you're doing. I respect it. I do. I, you know, I do wish people would at least attempt in their copy and pasting frenzy to like personalize one or two lines here and there. You know, uh, when someone sends me a pitch email and they're like, oh, you know, I should be on your podcast. And you know, and you, got, you don't even mention the name of the show. You don't mention why you should be on this specific show. It's you know, it's a little annoying. I think it, I think it's a little careless, and not for nothing. I don't think it's effective because now I see through that, and I'm not you know, I know what you're doing. So this guy sends me an email, and I, I think he very clearly has no idea what I stand for because the title of the the subject line of the email is "Ever wonder why so many women are so fed up with us." And already I'm like, ooh, this, this, hey, okay, here we go. Hi, Billy. Your podcast is a great idea. Oh, is it now? It is it now, you phony. Okay. I wrote a book with a similar vein that I think you could have a lot of fun with on your podcast. I think you meant in a similar vein. Wrong preposition. No big deal. It's about why women huh, are so fed up with us. I assume men. Ah, Ooh, you know, guys, I don't know if you know this, but uh, men and women are different, apparently. He goes on with, you know, his copy and paste, his pitch email goes on with, uh, ever ask yourself why so many women are so frustrated with 21st century men? Ever ask yourself why so many women find fault in so many men? My book of relationship advice Four men has been translated in 24 languages by publishers in Europe, Asia, Latin America, and Africa. Oh no, your shitty message has spread worldwide? Fuck. Here's my personal growth story. When I got divorced, (laughs) like a lot of people, I blamed the other person. Then I asked myself, what do I have to learn from this? And so began my journey seeking to learn what it really means to be a man in a relationship. Oh yeah, be a man, right? Okay. I now coach women on how to inspire men to be the kind of man women want and coach men on how to be men that women love and respect. An interview on your show would not only benefit your audience, we could have a lot of fun with it. Yeah, because you know, broads and gents, they different. What, what do you think, everybody? Does he sound like he would be fun and, and, and beneficial to you? And then finally, we get to the title of the book, which is really just, ooh, the fun one. Being the strong man, grr, a woman uh, wants timeless wisdom on being a man. Yeah. By, uh, by, by Elliot Katz, because he wants his plug. There's your plug, sir. Uh, and, you know, I, I usually I just don't respond when I don't think it's a fit. And every once in a while, I try to explain to someone why I don't think they're a fit, mostly so uh, to help. Because, like, hey, maybe alter this little piece of behavior because this is coming across very poorly as the pitchy. And, uh, and you may want to change this for your future pitches. I say, hey, man, I'm not a big fan of gendering things and, and going men and women are different. 
uh, and I also only record in New York. And, you know, I got no plans to travel to Toronto because that, that's where he's based out of. And he questionably responded, uh, hi, Billy. Should I use the voice? Uh, hi, Billy. I don't know if this is what he sounds like. I just, this is the voice I have assigned to him. Hi, Billy. Thank you for your reply. It's fascinating. I was also not a fan of gendering. Was also. Was, as in past tense, implying that he currently, present tense, is a fan of gendering. Oh, no. He insisted on sending me the book, so I gave him my address. He mails it to me, uh, this this fella here, by Award Press, which I'm, I'm shocked. I thought this was going to be a self-published thing. It's, uh, again, it's called... <laughs> It's called Being the Strong Man. Strong Man is in all caps on the title of the book. That's, I'm just like, okay, we get it. I don't know. There's like, I'm I'm on a random page and it starts with, Grandpa continued. Why is there talks? There's just so much talk about a grandma and a grandpa. And I just don't think that that is what 2018 relationship advice needs. So... If you, if you guys want, Elliot, uh, Being the Strong Man a Woman Wants, Timeless Wisdom on Being a Man by Elliot Katz. I guess if you want, that's an option, I suppose. All right. Final email. Had me a little concerned because the subject line is FYI. And that's the subject line of someone who uh, who is going to try to teach me something. Or they're going to uh, criticize me about something. And oftentimes, both. Starts with, uh, <coughs> hello, Mr. Presida. And excuse me, everybody, but Mr. Presida is my father's name. I'm Billy. Hi. Love the show. I burned through the back episodes in the last year, so I now look forward to my Wednesday commute because I know there's a fresh man or podcast waiting in the car. Thanks for doing what you do. Other than acknowledging my love for your show, I wanted to share with you a little known aspect of quote unquote, trans in the military. My wife works as a medical professional in a naval hospital. She is not military, but a Department of Defense employee and has seen this firsthand. I'm like, oh, there's hope here. Maybe he's going to talk about like the discrimination they face. Maybe he's going to talk about the shitty behavior they get. Um, Maybe he's going to talk about the shitty treatment they get. I don't know. Uh, Maybe he's going to talk about how terrified some of these uh, men and women who are brave enough to serve our country are in light of Trump's transgender military ban. But he says, uh, service members are covered by TRICARE and can be seen at virtually any military hospital. If a man joins the service and then uh, decides to become a woman, mm, TRICARE will pay for it. But while they are undergoing the change, they are deemed not, quote, fit for duty. They are put on medical leave or light duty. The duty reassignment is based on medical advice, nothing else. Hey, everybody. I don't know if you know this, but uh, uh, homosexuality under medical advice used to warrant electroshock therapy. But sometimes uh, medical advice updates with the times. So this means they can't do their job for one to three years. They still get their salary and they get free medical care, but can't perform the duties they signed up to do. That doesn't seem right or fair. My biggest problem with these cases is that they receive priority over many other routine cases. If a soldier lost 100 pounds from changes in diet and exercise, they typically need excess skin removed. The trans patient gets priority over them. That excess skin causes gear to not fit well, which causes blisters and sores on their bodies. They're in the field getting rubbed raw doing their job while the trans soldier sits on their ass. Not fair, not right. Politicians of all persuasions suck. More often than not, they take a good idea and fuck it up. So I'm going to blame this on them, all of them. I think any rational being could agree that if you have the desire and ability to serve our country, then we should welcome you to join. I do think that if you join, you should be required (sighs) to stick with your gender until your service is complete. (sighs) If you retire, you still get free medical care after you're out, so make the transition then. You've earned it. Mm. In fact, I have a friend who did exactly that. 
name redacted, had a full career as an army officer, and now in her 60s has fulfilled her lifelong dream to become a woman. ay Was she forced to wait, or should she have been? No. But don't sign up unless you're willing and able to do your duty. I respect every individual's choice. If I misused pronouns herein, it is out of ignorance, not judgment or malice. Obama had it half right laying them in, and Trump had it half right not. I think there's a fair compromise available. You are what you are for the duration of your service. Dot, 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 for what it's worth. Thanks, LB. Now, take a moment, uh, and after you're done drywalling the hole that you put in your wall just now, let's talk about this. I um, Something that stands out with this guy is that it doesn't seem to be, like he, he points out himself, but it, it doesn't seem, seem to be malice behind any of this. It doesn't seem like the guy's got hate in his heart. It seems like he's got a huge misunderstanding of what being transgender is. So he's not educated, and I don't hold that against people. I started my response email with, you are what you are, and I emboldened the word what to remind him that, like, that's not the right word here, man, because these these aren't what's. These aren't things. These are people. These are who's, not what's. So I, I'll just read to y'all what I what I wrote him. I'm not going to jump down your throat because you seem insanely well-intentioned and accepting. And you do what I have to do a lot of times. Acknowledge my own ignorance. And I acknowledge that there is a, there's a courage in acknowledging that. To say, hey, I might be wrong here and this is what I think. You seem to have an incomplete understanding of what being transgender means, although you have an admirable desire to be accepting. No one is, uh, no one is quote unquote, no one's choosing to become a man or become a woman. They are a man or a woman. Their body just doesn't match who they are. When you say, I respect every individual's choice, I think you understand that it's not a choice. Just in the same way as like homosexual, bisexual, pansexual, service members don't choose who they love. Oh, uh, just don't bring your sexual desires to the military. Yeah, we, we didn't say that. We don't tell straight people not to be straight in the military, right? We never, we never did that. And why is that? Uh, well, partially because, you know, we assume that heterosexuality is the default and the norm and the standard. But other than that, we do that because someone can't, we all know that we, you can't switch that flip off and just stop being gay or stop being straight or stop being trans for the duration of their enlistment. Gender isn't current. It's who they innately are. Just like if you realize you're a bisexual man in the middle of your tour, you wouldn't tell him, well, stick with your current sexual orientation, okay? You wouldn't say that. And not for nothing, each day being in the wrong body is so insanely traumatic. In fact, not letting them transition can make them even more suicidal and unfit to serve, in my opinion. I'm not, I'm not like a medical professional, but I think having a more suicidal soldier, not a great idea. And these people can still serve. These people want to serve. Again, I'm not a medical professional. And if someone tells me, hey, during this time period, they may not be uh, you know, with whatever hormones or anything that they're taking. Not, you know, they may not be in, in a whatever mental state. I don't know. Someone, if a medical professionals present me with this. That that's what should happen. Okay, put them on light duty. But they can serve and they want to serve. They are there to serve. They're not signing up just to get a free operation and then sit at a desk. I would like you to reread your email, but I want I want you to substitute being trans with having a brain tumor. Okay? And would you be mad that that person is uh, sitting on their ass while getting paid and getting treatment? And recovering from, I don't know, brain surgery. Imagine you're an active serviceman and uh, not for gender 
reass- uh, uh, what I don't know the current term for what they call gender reassignment surgery. So forgive me, everyone. I- I'm ignorant. But imagine someone inadvertently cut your dick off and you're in the military. Yeah, you might want to recoup a little fucking bit. Okay? Yeah, you may want to take a little, a few weeks or months at the desk. I think it's very fair. Yes, LB, you seem like a nice guy who means well. Some people would, uh, some people would yell at you for this email. I think those people hurt the cause and turn away someone genuinely trying to understand, or at minimum, willing to expose his ignorance. Doesn't seem like you've got hay in your heart as much as you have a lack of education on the issue, and I'm not going to punish a guy for that. I will, however, uh, attach something that I want you to take a look at, and uh, I know this is an audio medium. I'm going to put a link to this in the show notes. I'm, uh, you'll see it on my social media. I'm attaching a diagram known as the genderbred person. I saw this thing my senior year of college, and it really helped me start to understand the difference between these terms and understand gender better. I Because I had very similar views as this dude about trans people and about gender, um, not necessarily in regards to the military, but I had similar viewpoints because of a lack of understanding. So this thing, uh, although it may look and seem childish because it's a fucking, you know, colorful diagram, it's a brilliant visual of the difference between sex, gender, sexual orientation, gender expression, you know, for what it's worth, dude. Uh, and to describe it to people, it's basically like a person that looks like a gender, you know, the typical gingerbread man. Uh, and, and by the genitals, it, it has an arrow and it says sex up in the heart area. They drew a heart and it says attraction in the head region. They have a brain and it points to that and says identity. Then there's this like big, you know, like a uh, big bracket thing surrounding the whole person. And it says expression. It's a great, great diagram. And because I am a piece of shit, uh, shameless self promoter. I did include at the bottom, you know, hey, you mentioned you're all out of Man or Podcast episodes and you can't wait till Wednesday every week. Well, you don't have to wait because there's nearly 100 bonus episodes available on the Patreon feed. Uh, so if you want to go get access to some bonus episodes, go become a member, you know, at the, at the website. I'm going to stop short of saying the website name because that seems a little extra greedy. And... I sent that to this dude, right? I sent that email. He did respond to his credit and he said, thanks. I'll never stop learning. I appreciate all you said. And I do see now that it's not a choice. For you to take the time to respond is absolutely amazing. I just finished your last episode with Ginger Banks and I admire her method of killing with kindness. Your kindness helped educate me. Think about that next time someone says something that you think is gross and hateful and and vitriolic. I don't know if vitriolic's a a word, but I'm going to use it. Think about that first and see what's this person's intention seem to be. Does it look like there's some hate behind there? Does it look like there's prejudice? Or does it look like they actually just don't know? Because, hey, I've I've been on this dude's side of the thing. I still get on that side on hit on on the wrong side of the things. When people shout at me and assume that I hate whatever group or whatever we're talking about, I'm so not as receptive as to when someone's like, "Hey man, this is pretty shitty. You seem like a good dude, so I'm going to give you a chance by just talking to you." Something to think about. Uh, before we get to my guest this week, Remy Casimir, okay, it is that time of the month. It is time to remind you to hashtag pay for your porn. Yes, uh, every month I remind you all that you just dump, sprinkle, you don't have to dump, just sprinkle a little bit of money into the adult entertainment industry here and there. That's how we will continue to get uh, high quality, well done, ethically made pornography for us to enjoy and whack it too, right? And, and so every month I put my money with my mouth is, and I pay for a subscription to a different porn website. Uh, this month uh, of April, I switched up just a little bit. It's not a website, but a physical magazine. I bought myself a copy of Math Magazine, the editor-in-chief of which uh, is Mackenzie Peck, who did a bonus episode of the Man Whore podcast this month. And I went ahead and I spent, you know, because, you know, it's not like a cheap magazine. It's a, it's a, 
I think it's a quarterly and it's, I think it's like $15 or so, something like that. Very well worth it. Beautiful photos, hot photos. They got erotica in here. I think I was whacking it to something about like a, like a panty fetish having priest. So I went to like my local feminist shop and I asked for math magazine Uh, and you can order one yourself online at math-mag.com. But if, hey, if you want to keep it to online, I do, I, I do want to throw it out there. My sponsor is hotmovies.com, which is a wonderful, ethical, and affordable way to hashtag pay for your porn. Uh, they do a model that I'm actually a big fan of that where you pay per minute. So you buy a bunch of minutes, and then when you're watching a video, it just detracts the minutes that you actually watch of the video from your time bank. And again, I, I will mention that all listeners of the Man Whore Podcast get 20 free minutes on top of whatever package you sign up for when you sign up at manwhorepod.com slash hot movies. Sorry to like do a sorry to do like a, a lot an ad read in the intro, but I just thought it was appropriate there. Cause uh because I use hot movies myself. And now for this week's guest, Remy Casimir. Yes, Remy is a, uh, a fellow stand-up comedian here in New York City, and she hosts her own fantastic podcast called How Come. And it is a show about how come she can't come. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talk all about the, uh, the female orgasm, about pleasure times, about sex toys, religion. Uh, really, really cool conversation with her. It was really nice getting to know her in this capacity. Uh, I, I, I had never really had a conversation with her. I think I like shook her hand once at the guys we fucked book launch party. And that was like really about it. So this was a, a cool way to get to know her better. Side note, it's a somewhat heteronormative talk about coming, but also studies show queers come way more often than straight gals. So it's like, I think y'all are crushing it. And so I don't mind that this one was a little bit more focused to one particular uh, sexual orientation of gals. Because uh, qu- if there's anything the queers are doing well, it's coming, it seems to be. So uh, just a little side note on that. Like, I'm aware before anyone wants to tweet at me. Let's go ahead and get to my conversation with Remy Casimir. Girls like, we fucked. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. oh, so like the show. But it's <laughs> girls I fucked. And uh, yeah, it, it, well, they didn't like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, and they, they typically have things that they're like, oh, I don't want to talk about this. Or yeah. uh, I had one who like very finally was like, yeah, can we just not talk about the time I licked your asshole? Because like my boyfriend's going to hear this. Yeah, and he, totally. And that skeeves him out. People get really weirded out by butt stuff, I've noticed. Yeah. Like. Or or talking like they're not weird about it in normal life, but they're weird about talking about it on podcasts because of things like that. Um, just because it's like, oh, it's going to make me less respectful to this current person I'm dating. I'm like, well, by the time this episode comes out, you might, you not, might not be, be dating, dating them. them. Yeah, <laughs> don't worry about it. And lo and behold, she is no longer dating that man now. So perfect. <laughs> yeah. And so. but the episode still exists. So fuck you. So. You should have given your all. But the, with professionals like the dude from that app that um, I, I don't know if I yeah. want to say or not, but yeah. he, uh, you know, I get some people where they're like, oh, I'm going to be on message and they got like a point and they're like, well, don't veer from like what I came here to accomplish from a yeah. PR standpoint. Be like, well, fuck off. Like, that's yeah. not. No, it was weird. Like I had asked a lot of people come on and they're so nervous to talk about it but then they end up spilling their guts because they're like oh everybody else has talked about this stuff like no 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 worries i'm like fantastic he i very i knew he was going to be uptight he's just that type mm-hmm. of per, you know whatever but i was like listen if i'm going to have you on this podcast this podcast is about come it's about coming <laughs> it's about your first time coming are you are you comfortable talking about that if you're not ta- comfortable at current relationship fine like, can we talk about how the first time you came sure he says and then he comes and he literally like runs verbal circles around me and 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 like basically interviews me mm. to like fill the time and i'm like dude this is just shit i'm gonna cut <laughs> like I, I see what you're doing but i'm just gonna cut this because it's not interesting to me it, like i don't care i care about the app but ultimately i'm asking people about yeah. their experiences i want to know about your fucking experience yeah we're trying to not about your new here. interface <laughs> your new interface on an app we already all know about 
Yeah, and have chosen to not download. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you do end up uh, interviewing me, I will not cut any of that. Uh, but it is a good time to say right now, uh, I am here with Remy Casimir. <laughs> is it Casimir? Casimir, you were perfect. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, who's a stand-up comedian, also has a great uh, podcast called How Come. How Come. It's in that the You title. didn't even get it, though. Well, I can't believe. <laughs> he was just like, oh, um, it's just about coming. No, it's about not coming. I didn't come <laughs> until... The like, fifth, sixth episode like of this recently. podcast. Yeah, like two weeks, three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're still glowing. From I'm, it. I'm loving it. Life is great. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, yeah. So I started it because I was really fucking frustrated and there weren't enough conversations apparently um, that were informing me. And I was like, I've been a sexual person my entire life. Like, I thought I had been experimenting. I thought I was mm. doing all the right things. No, we're not really like, not to get all, you know, feminist in- immediately, but we're not the way that society trains us to fuck isn't to make a girl come. We're training to have a baby. Yeah. But like how many times in your life are you having a baby? Like five times tops. <laughs> tops. <laughs> tops. Because, I don't know. Duggers is a little bit more. I'm not a Duggar. Yeah. But yeah, like I, I, you can do the vagina stuff, but like most girls come because they need clip play. I didn't even know that. <laughs> I didn't know. Oh, no. I know. We you just like we just be down there, be like, oh, like it I would be, be like awesome fingering if we... myself. Oh, and I thought that's what you did. Oh, wait, well, you're talking about your solo time? Yeah. Okay, no, I thought maybe like during sex. Well, during sex, yeah. Because during just... sex, I could imagine being like, oh, you know, if only we were allowed to touch that while we did this, <laughs> that would be great. But <laughs> no, during sex, if a guy ever did that, I feel like guys are like way. They don't understand how sensitive the object is. And so they'll just kind of like, like mush into it and like go really hard mm-hmm. or whatever. And like for some girls, that's great. Or maybe they learned it from an ex-girlfriend or they've learned it from porn or whatever. But a lot of people are different. And like, that's the big thing in this is that I've been like, Oh shit. You have to consciously be like, this feels good or this doesn't feel mm-hmm. good. It's not textbook. Like it's Remy's body, not like the woman. Yes. You know? Sadly, once we figure out you. Yeah. And then if you make the wise decision of stop fucking us. Yeah. And, <laughs> and then someone else starts making that mistake. Yeah. Uh, we got to solve the problem all over again. Exactly. It's like a whole different thing. Yeah. But it's the same with guys too that I've, I mean, like I had people come on and like, they you just have different erogenous zones and different shit that gets them off. And yeah. like everyone's different and. Yeah, you have to figure you out instead of being like, I need to be good at fucking point blank. Like, there's no such good at fucking is just listening to the other person and like being like, okay, you like that? All right, continue. Yeah. But also (laughs) we got to, you know, you also have to speak that it feels good or doesn't feel good because communicating is not where I just came from. Communicating. (laughs) but (laughs) Communicating. (laughs) Connect to cut. Um, (laughs) Uh, Yeah, but it's like we're not mind readers. You know, we don't Mm -mm. we don't fucking know. Mm -mm. It's like, if you think you don't know, we know even less. I know. And I thought, I I always thought that the the guy was like the sexual knowledgeable one, which is a very silly thing to assume. Like, you're just like, oh, I'll let this guy do what he knows to me. No, like you've been with your body for just for longer. Learn your body, girl. You know, It Um, it tickles me that there's a thought that the guy knows and you don't like, right? like when they separated us in grade school into the different classrooms and the boys yeah. go here for health and girls go here for, it's not like they were teaching us. Oh, by the way, this is how you make women come. No. Oh no, 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 no. <laughs> That's not happening. No. It's not like we're withholding the training from you because we're teaching us. <laughs> no, I feel like guys are even trained like opposite. It's like, don't, who cares if they come? Yeah. You know, it's kind of this like machismo thing. It's just like, we're just here to get our nut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's, Not that they're teaching that in fourth grade health either. Like, hey, kids, you're just there to get your night back. <laughs> that teacher gets fired. Yeah. Um, and rightfully so. Uh, but I don't know. Yeah. What was your sex ed like? My sex ed uh, was, it was just like very mechanical. This is the vagina. This is the, mm. you know, this is how you roll a condom on a penis. Uh, no, well, you didn't roll on a penis. We rolled on mm. a banana. Um, but it wasn't like sex is supposed to be fun and sex is, but it, it was just like very clinical. Well, I mean, I've never expected anyone to answer with a school teaching like sex for pleasure. That is sadly way down the line. But you seems like you had like a semi adequate by like yeah. the normal standards. Yeah. And my parents are both medical professionals. So ah, okay. like I've just known everything in like a very medical way, but not the um, like enjoyment aspect of it. No one ever taught you like this is supposed to feel good. No, no. Like, you know, it feels good, but you don't. There's just not enough emphasis on the female orgasm mm-hmm. because you don't require it to have a child. Yeah. 
Like they're not teaching, they're not teaching, uh, like they're teaching intercourse. Intercourse is for, for, for reproduction. Yeah. It's not like, uh, making love. <laughs> right. But then once we started acknowledging that, like, we're not always fucking for the purpose of a child, then like parents are like, you know, the dads are teaching like, well, this is how you get your nut off. Exactly. And then, uh, yeah. we always uh, skip over y'all. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, even I'm sure in your school too, but like, didn't you see girls as sexually active as slutty? Uh, no, I just saw every woman as uh, unattainable. That's oh. <laughs> it was a there's a lot of like poetry writing uh, in oh, high school for Billy. Yep, yep. Cute. Yeah, I wrote one poem. Got into the school paper that we only had two editions of. Uh-huh. Uh, that one did not last. Was it a, about a specific girl? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, wrote it about this one gal. Uh, we'll call her Kay, and mm-hmm. got onto the front page of the thing. And I got to bre- I went to boarding school. Okay. And so I got to breakfast, and pe- and and her friend came up to me. Her best friend at the whole school comes up. It's like Billy, you're worried because she knew who it was about. Like everyone yeah. knew who what was going on, and she was like, Billy, your words took my breath away. I was like. <gasps> Oh my god! I was like, thanks. Do you think she's gonna like it? And she's like, oh no, 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 she's not no, going no, out no, with no. you. <laughs> but like, you're a good writer, <laughs> yeah. and so like, you should know that. Well, that's enough. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll take a little bit. I actually had a guy. Um, I was on my friend puts together this like charity show, and the first one that she did, she has like different types. It's not just comics. It's like uh, singers and poets or whatever. And this one guy recited this beautiful poem about this girl that he was in love with and afterwards i was leaving and i was like hey great poem and he was like great set like you want to sit around for a cigarette i was like no and then i left or whatever and then like three months later she put on the same show and i was hosting this one and he came back and he read a poem that was legit about me Mm. about that night and it's about that cigarette it's called what i think about when i think about the night that we met and it is the most beautiful poem like if I had been single and attracted to him. We would be married now. <laughs> like, po- I don't, poetry, it's the nicest thing you could, because it was like, holy sh- Like, I always think that I'm the only one who remembers shit. One, because I'm a girl, and two, because mm. I'm a fucking elephant. Like, my mind is a trap. Okay. And so, like, I always remember shit about people, and I feel like I'm creeping them out. And so, it was just so nice to have somebody remember something so specific about you. And, like, oh, my God, he was talking about, like, my internet shit. and st- like it, Your internet shit? Like, he was like, I, I see, like, a haze of you through the internet or whatever. Like, <laughs> it was, like, the nicest way to say, like, I stalk you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but it's it like was it just beautiful. just got from sweet to creepy. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> I was very moved. I, I don't want the internet to infiltrate poetry because I feel like there's just no sexy way to describe the internet. Your Instagram account. But it was. It was like this blue haze of your Instagram account or something haze. like that. Uh, I loved it. Yeah. I'm sure your boyfriend did it. Hated it. Hated it because now the bar is raised. Hated it. <laughs> He's like, fuck, I got to do a thing now. Well, he also thought it was just really disrespectful that like he would be openly hitting on me in Uh such a public forum. I was like, but he never said my name, you know, but it's art. It's, you know, yeah, but that was a doozy. Was that the grandest gesture uh, a person's ever thrown your way? Yeah. 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 It was shocking to me. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's wild. It's way better than a slide into the DMs, I think. Definitely better than a slide into the DMs. Yeah. Uh, although effective, way less, you know, uh, yeah. artsy. But then at the same time, I was like, wait, wait, wait. I, I have to remember that when I met this kid, he had written something equally, if not more beautiful about another. So it's like, yeah. it's like anybody sliding into any DMs. Like you can copy and paste <laughs> to 50 different girls. So what I find fascinating is that like, we both kind of had these shows where we had a problem. Yeah. Right. And we started in like in like in pseudo earnest to maybe solve it, right? Yeah. Me, it was like I'd like to have someone actually say I love you back to me instead of just asking me to fuck around. Yeah. Uh, and you were just like, I just want to come. I just want to fucking come. <laughs> it's just really so, I'm so wound up. <laughs> so tense right now. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't know about you, but the, when I told people I was going to do the show, yeah, the first one of the first questions people would ask me, and people still ask me this mm-hmm. question is like, well, what happens if you get a girlfriend? Right. So did people ask you like, so oh, what yeah. happens, what when, happens you when you come? I was like, first, like when I started, I was like, oh, this is going to be forever. Mm. Um, that's not a question I even have to think about. Yeah. And then the second I started getting assignments, because that's what I, I mean, you've listened to an episode or two. Um, I asked people, hey, uh, 
what would you assign me, you know, to do for this week? So my guests would give me an assignment once a week. And by the fourth week, I was like, holy shit, I'm getting kind of good at this. Yeah. And I'm going to figure it out. And then I was like, okay, well, it continues because I have had so like besides making myself come, which has been <laughs> awesome, uh, <laughs> but I have made other people come, not myself, but uh-huh. um, people sliding into my DMs, mostly women, just being like, I was super uncomfortable with my body. I'd never done this. I'd never done it with a person. I did it for the first time. I listened to episode three. I did that assignment, like, and I'm like, shit, that's amazing. And so that feeling has been better than coming. Right. Um, and I was like, I have to continue. So what I've been doing now for these episodes is I'll just be like, what's something cool that that people can try. Uh, so somebody was like, try and masturbate with lube. I was like, I've already done that, but our listeners can still do that. Yeah. Um, so that's how it continues. And it's now I'm trying to dig into what are the factors in society that are making this problem happen. So I just did an episode on like Judaism because that's the religion I was raised in. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, you know, about parents and other factors that shape who you are and the way that you think and, um, you know, sex and sexuality. You don't think about that being tied into stuff that's, I'm I'm sorry I'm laughing but, in my head because I tried to write down Judaism to like come back to that yeah uh, and I c- could not figure out how to spell it I think I just did like f- <laughs> you wrote it like Judy J-U-D-A-E. like an old wife I threw in an I because I got nervous yeah Judaism so, I don't is there an O I don't know uh you, sorry. you did it I was <laughs> just, just hoping it wasn't like Judy Jets and isms <laughs> oh no oh no oh no are all the guests on your show um comics uh i have a mix of comics experts and okay. professionals so i was gonna say if there's only comics like just asking them for tips like that's just gonna get silly yeah soon. no literally i asked mark norman and he's like uh put something up your butt and i was like <laughs> okay yeah put something up your butt this week <laughs> <laughs> um did, did so wait how did judaism play a factor into like your i guess sexual upbringing um f- so judaism is really open and shit except for the fact that you always have this pressure of marry a Jewish person. Mm -hmm. Um, And I've never been attracted to Jewish people. So that Uh, just started from day one. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm going to have to like put myself into this mold mm -hmm. um, of, I'm not attracted to this, but this is who I have to end up with, Um, which is like very small scale. uh, But like, you know, imagine being told you have to be straight your whole life and like you're gay. <laughs> you know, that's how I feel about Christian boys. That's what yeah. I like. <laughs> that's what I let, let me do it. So there's no like guilt attacks uh, attached to sexuality, at least like in your sect no. or whatever. No, no. Uh, no, I'm super reformed. So it's like do it. But it, but it, there's also this thing of like you want to be the Jewish housewife. So you don't want to be too marred or like, you too know, used. too used. Exactly. You, yeah. You want yeah, to enough- be pristine. You want to be marvelous. Mrs. Maisel. Mm. There's I, I remember reading a few years ago. There's like a woman in New York City who she's like she's uh, I think like Hasidic, but she mm-hmm. does sex education for Hasidic Jewish women like to like she tells women to masturbate. Yeah. And it's this like huge like controversial thing sure. for them, yeah. Um, because like they're not even supposed to like know what the word pleasure was. Yeah, and- it's very as it gets into like the more uh, like Hasidic sex and stuff. Like they're very because they're very closed off, but they're also hypersexual. Like it's if you listen to the episode, it's wild. But um, I think masturbating so awesome because you, you finally have like like i used to only get sexual pleasure when i was with another person really yeah you know and now it's like oh i have this like powerful thing i can do by myself that's dope <laughs> um but in judaism it's actually considered a mitzvah uh to fuck your wife when she's horny <laughs> um and doing it on shabbat is a double mitzvah so it's like about the Saturday on when you're, Saturday. When you're not yeah. Supposed to do work. Right. Ah, right. Uh, fine. I'll fuck you. <laughs> yeah. On Saturday it's supposed to be my day off. Woman. Yeah. So it's this one thing of like, oh, that's so sweet that like they care about our pleasure, but they don't care about it enough to let you do it yourself, yeah. which is kind of fucked. Hey. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I had, uh, I, you know, I don't know if it was Catholic guilt or what, but like my dad would just yell at me mm-hmm. because he'd be like, yo, you couldn't get a woman to do that for you. Well, you can't. Ah. Yeah, like he he's called he called me masturbating a couple times. Granted, they were like in the living room, but hey, that's where the why computer, were you in the living? That's okay. where the okay. singular the computer, computer was yeah. that big apple oh, with yeah. a blueberry back. <laughs> oh, this was uh, I was more of a, a gateway. Uh, Ooh, okay, ooh, okay, yeah, yeah. I haven't heard. I haven't used the word gateway in a long time. 
the I'm big trying, old tower. Yeah. Had that oh. CDR and CDRW drives. Oh Ooh, my God. Yeah. I still am bitter about my mom giving away my tower. I'm like, there's photos on there from AOL. <laughs> <laughs> I got old saved conversations. Yeah, I talked to my crush. <laughs> and he liked my away message about Dave Matthews. Come uh, on, man. <laughs> oh, the away message. Yeah. Oh my God. That was like that was the first sliding into DMs mm-hmm. was like I would leave my AM away message as like a flirt to whoever was it would be like rub a dub dub, I'm in the tub, come join me. <laughs> Seventh grade Remy being a massive perv. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Um I don't know why about oh so yeah no but my dad would like catch me at like two a.m. Catch you outside in the living room. Yeah, <laughs> jerking off. Uh, and not for nothing. Also, now I'm starting to think, Dad, what are you doing up at two a.m. in the kitchen? He's going to jack off in the kitchen <laughs> with the butter, or whatever. It is. He's like, this is my time. This is- we don't have water based lube, so I have to use dairy. This week's episode of the Man Whore Podcast is sponsored by HotMovies.com. Uh, HotMovies.com, as you know, I mentioned in the intro before, is a pay per minute porn site where you buy a bulk of minutes to watch whatever porn you want to watch and they've got an extensive library of licensed porn uh and they've got so much porn that like you can cross reference and search in such an intricate manner uh so when the guy was emailing me saying like hey uh maybe you want to mention that like every scene is broken down with uh, star names, physical attributes of the performers, the setting, the acts, the themes for each scene, uh, anything you would want to search for. So he says, here's an example. Do you want to find a scene with a girl with red hair and glasses having anal sex? And he sends me a link. And then lo and behold, I am looking at multiple scenes of redheads wearing glasses, having anal sex. There's 86 results. Here's there's a DP. This one's BBW. This one's fucking hentai. Uh, that's how much varied stuff they've got in their database. It's insane. I actually was watch. I tried to find a video of uh, Jessica Drake last night with Venus Lux. Both of them man or podcast guests. Uh, Jessica was on the show and sh- uh, in an upcoming episode, and she mentions this particular scene she was excited for. It was her and three trans porn stars like kind of gang banging her. And I was like, I, I don't normally watch trans porn, but like, I want to see that. But I don't remember what the, the thing was called. So I went to Hot Movies. I searched Jessica Drake, Venus Lux. Boom. First result is the uh, the showcase movie, uh, Jessica's showcase movie. And then the movie uh, page breaks it down by scene. And then I just look at the scenes. Oh, look, scene five is her and Venus Lux and these other two women. And I watched it. With my, with my free minutes I had from signing up, and it was fucking hot. And you can try out hotmovies.com for free with 40 free minutes. Those chumps who don't listen to the Man Whore Podcast only get 20 free minutes. But if you sign up at manwhorepod.com slash hotmovies, you can get up to 40 free minutes on the house just to try out the site, and you can feel good because you are watching ethically paid-for porn. Again, Go to manwhorepod.com slash hotmovies or use the promo code manwhore when you sign up and your uh, your free mints will be added to whatever package you choose. Manwhorepod.com slash hotmovies. Hashtag pay for that porn. And now back to Remy Casimir. Like, was there a celebration with your listeners of like, well, Remy finally came. Oh. Like, oh my gosh, we're so happy for you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, listeners, my fucking family. I live with my grandmother. My grandmother heard me talking about it on the phone or something like that. And she's like, I heard you did that thing. Congratulations. <laughs> um, that's, oh, yeah, Remy. strangers, congratulate. It's wonderful. Um, never thought that would be a thing in my life. Where people congratulate you for coming. Yeah, yeah. Um, Only like really on a porn set was that something you maybe yeah, imagine? But it's like, yeah, we did it. Oh, All she right. came, great. Yeah. We got the shot. That's a wrap. Thank you. <laughs> well, take a towel, wipe yourself off. <laughs> um, yeah, no, that's been really cool. Uh, toys, I think. I like. I love how you use the word toy too, because like, I'm still with like machine. Like I'm not like comfortable. Yet. I'm like it's a machine. The, like I, I call it like my device. Hey, <laughs> that's a machine. I'm pointing to literally yeah. a stack of <laughs> like air, conditioners. air conditioners. I have four. Yeah, I have six air conditioners here. I'm selling. Um, but I like toy. But- I mean, and a guy saying toy like it just makes it this like <laughs> universal thing of like these are things that we play with. They're fun. It's yeah. not like this weird 
fucking like everyone oh these machines are taking our jobs no this is like a, <laughs> this is um a great thing that's like an added benefit like a lot of people have asked me too after like oh because i came with the womanizer specifically yes, I heard. and uh they're like oh uh have you come with your boyfriend yet and i'm like well yeah but not him doing it with the toy doing it yeah but that's the same thing. That's still, I've gotten out of my head and I'm now able to come with another person. That's like, ha- I think 75% of coming with another person is is not the mechanics. It's yeah. like being out of your head and comfortable enough to like let yourself go. Mm-hmm. So I think that's just as warranted an orgasm that we came to, you know, like. Yeah. And yeah. I would say the same for any dudes who are like, strugg- like you know, who, who struggle with coming during sex yeah. or getting hard or staying hard. It's all, it, that's almost always mental. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you're when the, you're our age, that's a, that's usually a mental problem. Yeah, and we're not. I mean, we're in our late twenties now, so yeah. we're a little more comfortable. But like, when you start having sex, there's you're not comfortable with yourself. You don't like yourself. So if anything's going wrong, if dicks get soft, if you dry up, you assume it's your fault or the other person's fault, uh-huh. and then everybody is so like. You're saying you as the as the chick as yeah. one okay, one yeah. a person. Yeah, you know, like even as a guy, you're like, oh, I'm soft or whatever. Like the girl sitting there being like, what did I do? Yeah. You know, which is like But in his head he's like, "Oh fuck, what what do I do? Yeah, what do no, I do now?" Everybody's just freaking out and like you just have to like that. I mean, it's so much easier said than done, but like to just like get comfy and be like, "All right, well, let's try a different way." Yeah. Like this doesn't have to You're not suddenly fat just cuz my dick's soft, <laughs> which is where my head goes. I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm suddenly so fat." <laughs> yeah. And not that being fat is like bad or unsexy, but like, you know, well, for personally, it, it's, no, yeah, it's I mean, I'm an Upper East Side Jew, so I was raised right. with neuroses that if you're not 110 pounds, you are worthless. Right. And as yeah. a, as someone who also is like constantly calling myself fat, like I, but I I just got feedback be like, I, "I don't know, I think last week's episode that guest was fat shaming." And I'd be like, hey, "Okay, fine disclaimers." Uh, yeah no i'm but, self-shaming when yes. i'm fat shaming it's yeah. not about the it's like everyone should be able you to be... think i'm gross yeah <laughs> this is basically how yeah. i feel you think i'm gross because you got your weenie all soft <laughs> right, right. and yeah but if we just and realize... i can't do p90x in the next 15 minutes so what are we doing right and you but what are we doing is like we can do other things exactly. i think one of the things i try to remind people is like you there's so much stuff you can do without a hard dick involved take a break take a break Kiss. Do you know how much girls love kissing? Do you know how much I love kissing? Thank you for saying yeah, that. It's like, it's like <laughs> my second favorite activity to it's do in bed. It's the best. best. Kissing's yeah. the best. I always think about, I'm like, what caveman invented kissing? Oh, no. That must have been an accident. Do you think, so? like, is, is it a natural inclination to put your mouth on someone else's mouth or your mouth on someone's gens? It's just like... Definitely not on Jens. I don't think anyone ever saw someone like squat in the corner of the cave, take a shit, and then be like, I'm going to put my that. tongue on it. Yeah. I got to lick that. Yeah, like rimming. Like, I don't know how that one got invented. Right? I think that had to have started as a punishment. Or maybe it really is natural. <laughs> you know, like, it's just like, hey, let's make each other feel good. And if it, we can do it with our mm. fingers or our toes or our mouths or a fucking <laughs> eyeball, elbow, you know, like, Aye. let's just do it. I just invented this wheel. I wonder if we can like incorporate Stick my dick this. in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I'm fucking the wheel. It's like- I actually, there was a girl. <laughs> this is the most creative thing I've ever seen. So I grew up here uh, okay. and we had these crazy loft parties where you like the seniors would rent a loft downtown. Everybody had to pay like 15 bucks to get in, but essentially be like in this open space where people bring your own bevs and there would be music and shit and people making out all over the place because like you can't hook up at home your parents Mm. live there and there was a girl on the dance floor getting fucked in her knee so in this section right between your calf and your thigh like your knee hole as if your your knee had an armpit your leg pit so the guy was sticking his dick in and out and she was just sitting with her leg like bent and this is this is right out in, in the, the open. middle of a party yeah that's in a high school party. high school party yeah, yeah. these are high school kids was, was she on the dance floor was she like on a couch kind of like okay you can have it it's like on prob- this you know like on a windowsill like right here has there's like this so she was sitting on the windowsill and like had her leg crooked and the guy was fucking in and out and it's just like dude Jesus. And he didn't even see anything because his jeans yeah. were still on oh so he's like humping. No, no, his dick was oh, his out, but out, his and jeans yeah. were on, and it, like, As, and the dick was between the legs. So you couldn't really see it except for the little tip would pop out sometimes, you know. But at that point, I'm like, dude, you th- Jesus still counts that. It's, yeah. That's <laughs> not the. That's not going to be an end what around. Is this girl getting out of it. She's, I love that. Oh. Yeah, behind my knee is my spot. <laughs> <laughs> and like I've heard of people like with armpits, and I was like, yeah. that's going to be weird. And now we've. 
uh, elevated what's weird for Billy. But armpits are e- even make a little more sense and go with me on this because oh, okay. because pheromones Strapped like in. like when you smell like like people are attracted to stink that's opposite mm. them like just chemically. Yeah. So like I know a lot of people that like actively smell armpits because that smell like turns them on a leg pit doesn't have that smell that's just your fucking leg like it's just sweaty <laughs> it's, just a it's, so it's got strange. the sweat of the armpit without like the uh the aroma that you're yes. apparently seeking yeah it's just a, not even seek you're not seeking it it's just like this um like chemical like physical chemical thing that's like scientific it's weird that's just did anybody go did no one stop them no right? and but did anyone ask I wouldn't want to like, stop them. I would. I would want to be like, why? No, I want to go think, ask questions. I think we loved it. I like any like. It was kind of like a notch on our belt. Anytime something <laughs> weird happened at a party, like it would be like, look how cool we are as a tribe. Like I think city kids, like we like being like very like sexual and like different and like doing shit that like oh we're braver than you. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because I don't know. There's a. I think there's an air of authority and there's like a sense of self you get from being here long enough. Yeah. I've lived here a little over a decade. So like, I feel like, oh, well, like you're official. Yeah. I feel like that's official New Yorker sass. But then I also am like, I am better than everybody. Exactly. In this, in this shit whole country of ours. Yeah. I, it, I, it's so funny because I grew up here and I, I didn't love, I didn't like, I, I thought the people were mean. I didn't like their sense of humor. I thought it was too fast too whatever. But then the second I went to college and I said, oh, I'm from New York City and everybody assumes I'm the coolest bitch around. Mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I guess I got to raise my kids in New York. I got to give them <laughs> this leg up. Yeah. You ever do that just even in comedy? You ever go to like, you ever just go visit a friend oh, yeah. somewhere and then She's you go to like New a York local York comic. Mic? Oh my God. They're just like, tell us of the promised land. Yeah. We're in Kansas City. But that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Like New York comedy, I think is... A pressure cooker in the most amazing way that you're competing with people who are hustling so much harder who are so fucking smart uh you have to be better or else you're gonna get lost yeah. i think like two years in new york like is like somebody comes in from fucking the middle of nowhere like, i've been doing standard for nine years i'm like why can't you tell a joke i know somebody's been doing it three months in new york and they're amazing <laughs> you know like <laughs> so so when uh when you announced the <laughs> the coming on the show mm. What did you get? Like you got reactions, you got stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyone send you gifts? Uh, I didn't get gifts for coming, but yeah. I've gotten gifts from like a bunch of sex toy companies that are like, yeah. okay, you can do it now. Try this. <laughs> yeah, see, see if this one works too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is uh, quite the perk of sex. Podcasting. It's amazing. It's just free toys. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Um, I even got Unbound sent me this mm. like. Uh, care package their box they're, their box yeah yeah and d- did you get a box uh no but like i'm familiar with with okay. unbound box well yeah. i mean besides the toys and everything they gave me the cutest little earrings that have the feminist symbol or feminine symbol on it yeah and i love that and like it just i feel so good i'm like i feel so cool and this all comes from me not being able to come wow yeah. great i've never paid for a sex toy i'm just trying to see how long oh, i can keep really? that streak going oh my god uh, so i paid for my womanizer mm-hmm. obviously but Money well spent. I, I, shh, we're married. <laughs> <laughs> we're married. I love her. Do you want to describe the womanizer to people? I mean, she's some people- currently in my pocket. Oh, well, I know the woman. And I didn't bring this even because <laughs> I was doing this podcast. I brought it because I was at my boyfriend's house last night and I was like, don't forget this at home for another night uh-huh. or at his house for another night because I'm going to want it at home. You got to tell him to buy one so that that's what I was thinking. Drawer, I need to yeah. have just as I like keep like two sets of pills everywhere. Mm-hmm. Like I need... two sets of pills. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Like, you know, I have to take your pill sure. in the morning or like whatever birth control. Like, you know, got to keep yeah. it everywhere. You should have a sex toy for every home that you reside in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I, I'm glad to know it was because you were at the boyfriend's not because they're like, I don't know. Sometimes I'm out to lunch. I'm like, I want to just take a quick <laughs> break. I'm going to go to the bathroom real quick. I literally would though. I'm I'm such a pro. It can happen in 30 seconds now. It's yeah? insane. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Oh, but I do multiples too, so I can yeah. I can do one and then be like, "Okay, I'm done," or I can like sit with it for 20 minutes and be like, "All right, now I'm really done." Uh, how awesome is it to know not only that you can come, but you're one of those like people who can come multiple times? It's fucking insane. Yeah. So, do you want to describe the womanizer to people who who don't know what it is? Because you say yeah, like you yeah, say yeah, the, yeah. the the Hitachi wand, you say the rabbit. People know what that people is, know. but I didn't know what the Hitachi was, but um, <sighs> now I do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it is a lot. The womanizer, even though it's got a terrible name, is a wonderful device. Um, mine looks like a lipstick. Um, mm-hmm. 
is like a three times the size of a normal lipstick. And then the, and so what it does is it's a clit suction device. Um, so it has like the normal slant of a lipstick. Uh, and then there's a hole in that slant and you put that hole on your clit and it mm-hmm. sucks you and it's got different modes, uh, different patterns and it's wonderful. And if, uh, have you ever had guys do that suction method? So or? I didn't know that that was a thing. I recently tried it out, but it's not uh, strong enough. Mm-hmm. Like a mouth can't, I don't, they can't, I don't think so. Sorry, fellas. Sorry. Yeah. I, but not sorry. Like, beca- it's a very quick fix. We can have it between us and it's still awesome. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't mean like still don't go down on girls who can't come that way because that's still a fun precursor. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, cause I, I used to have someone who requested I do it, but she was, she want, she had like some penis envy mm-hmm. and she was like, I want you to suck my click like it was a cock. Like I want to see your head bobbing. Oh. And, was, and I was like, okay. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to pretend I'm sucking a really, really tiny dick right now. Yeah. Just go to town on that. And like, that was her thing. Yeah. See, I, I think that's great. Yeah. I like that. That's cool. <laughs> but how do you... Mm. It's just, can did your mouth hurt afterwards? No, like, <clears throat> like I just put my like lips over and then I, like I, I don't know, like I sucked in and then once I like had it, I'm like trying right now. <laughs> yeah, like I can't do. It. I went out, but like once I like had it in my lips grasp, then I would just start. Like, yeah, Bob, your Bob head. in my head and be like, this is how it it looks from where I usually yeah. am. Yeah, <laughs> I mean a lot of optics like play into sex you know like even if it's not physically doing anything if that makes her feel powerful like people like to feel feel powerful during that's a whole bdsm thing yeah ds dynamics yeah what 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 gets you going romance (laughs) poetry romance uh (laughs) literally i think uh it's hard to ask for this but i like like body worship goddess worship Mm. you know like somebody complimenting you the whole time or being like somebody who seems like they're so taken by the experience that they might be able to cry, but they won't. <laughs> oh, I love that. That's, yeah. that's exact. I mean, that's what I like to receive as well. Like yeah. I also want to shower me with compliments. I can't give yeah, myself, but it, it's hard to ask for that because the second you ask for it, you're like, well, you're just saying this because I asked for it. And so it doesn't feel real, mm-hmm. but you know, Ask for it a few times and then it becomes second nature. And the person that you're fucking is attracted to you, you know, like otherwise they wouldn't be fucking you. Which I still disagree with most of the time. I'm like, why are you attracted to this? This is so weird. So as you're just, I mean, I've had the same thing that like I'll be fucking a guy and I'm like, can he not do better than this? What a fucking loser, (laughs) you know? And like, that's just, that's self-hatred, which is a prevalent thing with comics, but most people too. (laughs) Um, And like, yeah, give, I don't know, absolve yourself of that. Like somebody's fucking you. They're probably having a good time. Mm Mm-hmm. How'd your how'd your boyfriend deal with the how long you've been with the boyfriend? Almost two years. Oh, so how did he deal with the the not coming in the beginning? Um, I think because I was let's take so your problem un- and make it about a man for a moment. No, no, like- <laughs> I, I I did a lot of thinking about that. How is this going to affect him? Are people going to think about? you know, oh, he can't do it. Mm. He must be bad in bed or whatever. Like that's everyone's first inclination is like, how do your boyfriend feel about it or whatever? And like, I obviously care about that. That is a very, you know, important person to me. But I think it's a valid concern for other people, but it was more like in our relationship, like this is a thing that sucks. Um, Mm. So we're going to work on it. He at no no point was ever like, I don't think you should do this. This is stupid. Uh, This isn't unwarranted. Like he's been very supportive. Yeah. Yeah. Would would y'all would was sex like fun for you? Just you wouldn't. We have the best sex. Well, yeah, but like you you were having fun. Yeah. Would would things feel good? Oh yeah. But just never, just couldn't cross. That's why I'm the perfect person to have started my podcast because I'm I'm a sexual little deviant. Like (laughs) I like weird shit. I like to do fun stuff like we used to dress up at five in the morning you know and like you know put on weird outfits and from their fucking promo videos exactly exactly (laughs) um and uh yeah so i was always like oh this is so strange that i'm such a freaky deaky person and not like Mm -hmm. getting the real benefits but now that i know it's literally it's not like anyone was doing anything wrong i need a machine I just do. Yeah. 
And there's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. I, I mean, I won't say nobody was doing things wrong. Like, there's definitely boyfriends who neglected, you know, the, the puss. The space. Made you feel fat a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, my ex-boyfriend was really body shamey. Uh, and that made me feel like, oh, well, I'm not even worth trying for. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, this boyfriend's great. I love him. What kind of freaky shit are you into? Like, I like, I've always liked Rocky Horror Picture Show. <laughs> okay. So, like, I just like gender bending and, like, uh, I don't know. I, I, you like to, like, draw on the stash? Not for me. No. Nah. But like, I like when guys look pretty. <laughs> you like pretty dainty boys. Yeah. I had an ex who liked that too. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we go to a I like p- when they look masculine too. I just liked, I like to do, like, let's just have fun. Let's be mm. weird. Um, and like, I love to laugh during sex. Yeah. So like, not necessarily like, oh, I need to be like licking a butthole. But like, I, I just like to have a good time. And sex is performative for you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. That's fun. Do you put makeup on him? No, he wouldn't let me in the he beginning. He let you? I mean, no. But like, he would like put on my nightgown in the beginning as like a little joke. And it's not like we're like trying to like, I, I don't know. It, it's just, it was fun. Yeah. It was fun. And we would have the best sex and and we still have the best sex. And uh, yeah, it's just better now because I can finish. <laughs> <laughs> would granny give you tips when you were? No, no, my grandmother actually said something really uh strange but poignant to me when i started the podcast uh that because i asked her i was like have you ever had an orgasm she was like did you say it like that yeah like like, because we were really talking about it and well actually she was saying she that she was like oh i didn't know that you couldn't or whatever and i was like yeah well even my sister has trouble mm. unless she's by herself. And she looked at me and she was like, what do you mean by yourself? Like masturbating? And I was like, yeah. And she is like, oh, no. And I was like, you've never done that? <laughs> and she's like, no. And I was like, but you had an orgasm? She's like, yeah. And I was like, well, how? She's like, well, your grandfather was a very uh, caring lover. <laughs> and she's like, maybe you haven't been with somebody who truly loves you yet. Oh. Which was, I was like, oh, well, hmm. That's something I've been worried about in all of my relationships, just because, you know. <laughs> Thanks for dropping that one in, Grandma. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was like, oh, shit, that sucks. Um, but ultimately, that wasn't the case. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the, we had this question before when I was doing the little pre-screener. I was like, hey, so like, what sexual orientation do you um, identify as? And then there was just like lots of like starts and pauses to your yeah. answer. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so here's my thing is I never want to like steal someone's struggle. A lot of my like my gay guy friends are like, you're trying to steal my struggle because I... Oh, fuck that. I dated, um, and by a lot, I mean one specific person who's very mean to me, um, but we are friends. Okay. <laughs> um, but... I dated a guy who was bisexual uh, three years ago. And in that time, I was like, oh, maybe I should explore my sexuality Mm. too. Um, And I hooked up with one girl to do so, but we weren't attracted to each other. And it was Mm. like in a threesome situation and like her and I didn't do anything to each other. And so it was like this thing. But I I think that there are, I think I'm probably 5% gay. Mm. You know, because that's how the guy that I was dating at the time, he's like, I'm 10% gay, but you're in the 10% of women, or I'm 90% gay, but you're in the 10% of women that I'm attracted to. Right. And I was like, okay, I get that. Like, there are some women that I would deaf fuck. Mm -hmm. And then when I bring that to the table with some people that I'm close with sometimes, they're like, you're just trying to be 2018. You're just trying to be trendy and shit. And I'm like, I really don't think that's the case. Um, But I've also, I've never been very intimate with a woman that I'm actually attracted to. I've never like, mm. you know, eaten a box or anything. So yeah. I don't want to. But would you give it a try? Yeah, I yeah. would. I would definitely. But it would have to be somebody that I'm really into. Um, and I found that a lot of the girls that hit on me, I'm into the fact that they're hitting on me, but I'm not into them. Oh, I do love the being hit on. I don't even care who or yeah. what they look like. I'm yeah. just like. I'm just happy that someone's interested. Yeah. No, my main guy, though, is I love a gay guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's Wait, my, I love a gay guy. I just like love an unattainable. As you in know you're, how, tr- you're attracted to yourself? Yeah. Saying? Okay. Yeah. Like the most, you know how most girls are like, oh, I want to fuck the guy who's fucked a million girls because I want to like, I want to get him to settle down and like, 
like I want to challenge. My challenge is like I want to flip a guy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> mildly problematic statements. I know. I'm just happy to have someone who can get yelled at and it's not me. It's always nice. Nice. Uh, I had Eagle Wit on last month, and he's then amazing. He, he fantastic, right? And mm-hmm. we were talking about catcalling, and he was and um and like false rape allegations that came up. Sure. And then he starts getting really nervous. So like, no, dude, I am so relaxed right now because like the tweets won't be about me for a change. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Oh well, that's what you're thinking with me now. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying every guy that I've dated is gay. I just like I no, I just the, just the idea of flipping some yeah yeah and the, I the also- whole chasing Amy thing. It's, yeah it's a thing some people like you know don't enjoy yeah I, and but i also um i just like i like a person that can be very whole in that you have both parts of each gender you mm. you know like i don't like a feminine man yeah or a masculine woman i think i'm yeah. a very masculine woman in, in a lot of ways but i'm very feminine too i think you have to like have both to be a human well, you do have a very like a uh, powerful like part Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's very intimidating. This is very uh, finance business bro part. Yeah. I'm, well, taking, that's, that's I'm why, taking a meeting at Laundra Cote after this. <laughs> well, that's why I asked like with the boyfriend, like when you said like you like doing some gender bending in bed, like I was like, okay, maybe he th- you put some makeup on him. Maybe you throw on a no, stash or something. No, like he, I could I could see how y'all could like do that and have fun with that. Yeah. No, we haven't done that. I mean, it's mostly just like like clothing. Sure. Um. But but that was in the beginning. Just, it was just it was offer more, some eyeliner. But it, it's a, that's the gateway I drug mean, of it. That's, yeah, you know. Yeah, no. I uh, <laughs> I saw myself in eyeliner. I was like, I could get used to this. Yeah. And the other day, <laughs> he shot a promo where I put false lashes on, or he put false lashes on mm. and uh, black lipstick because he was being a magician. And apparently, that's what magicians. And I was like, you look beautiful. <laughs> 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 like, oh my god. But there is something to that. Like, I but he's know. very dominant in bed. Like, mm. I won't say that. Like. I'm not like that girl that's like trying to like get my dick sucked. Like he's yeah. the one who's yeah. But there's still something nice. There's an aesthetic to seeing like the beautiful man. Or yeah. Something. Or beautiful. Like just someone, I don't know, like glossed up. Let's both be like beautiful and hot. Yeah. Yeah. We even like, I mean, we we're, I'm wearing fucking sweatpants overalls right now, but like. <laughs> so I didn't know we were a thing. They are. Uh, um, you took like the two most relaxing is, pieces of clothing. This is actually something that was sent to me as a gift ah. that's not a sex toy and it's i mean just as sexy but um yeah like i'm always pretty casual and sometimes we'll just be like let's get gussied mm. you know it's nice to both get like dressed up and like uh, we had an episode where we were talking about tantric sex mm. and my friend betsy carroll read this book about tantra and she's like a lot of sexual energy comes from the work that you put into having sex so like when you're taking a shower and you're shaving your whole body and you're getting scrubbed up and you're doing your makeup that's all energy leading up to sex and that's going to make the sex itself Mm -hmm. so much more powerful time for the fan whore appreciation moment oh yeah this is the part of the podcast where i like to thank a few of the members of my fan whore community on patreon and i like to thank them because is because of those members i'm able to do this silly sex talk job as a profession they're the ones keeping the lights on. They're the ones who get the thank yous. So I want to give a shout out to Jennifer Palmer, who uh, is one of those lone, there's a very strange, she came from Twitter. She was a Twitter follower, became a podcast fan, and has finally worked her way into the champagne room. Thanks so much for your support. Scarlett Harrop. Oh, from, from Great Britain. Very nice. I love seeing so many uh, British listeners Join up on Patreon. It's starting to make me feel like I need to come back to good old London, right? Yeah, thank you. And Sean Matthews. Shout out to Sean, who, you know, I can't really find anything about you, buddy, but uh, I hear Sean Matthews. I start thinking Boy Meets World. I start thinking of Corey's son, and I'm like, did Corey's son grow up to become a fan of the Man Whore podcast? That's the world I want to live in. Thanks so much for your support. And you, too can become a member of our fan whore community for as little as $1. That'll get you access to private fan whore communities, shout outs on the show, a slew of exclusive man whore podcast bonus episodes, and so much more. All you have to do is head on over to patreon.com slash man whore podcast. That's patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com slash man whore podcast. And now let's wrap up with Remy Casimir. My version of that is that uh, it's the it's all p- that's part of the anticipation. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think anticipation is most of foreplay. I yeah. think that's the sexy thing for me. I do either like I like 
sex with someone I'm I've connected with, or if I'm doing strange like some sort of weird, crazy stranger scene that's very orchestrated mm-hmm. that has a lot of parts that kind of has a script where like okay, we gotta send some emails and like plan this out. There's times whatever. Yeah. I like something really orchestrated like that because setting it up and organizing it is part of the eroticism yeah. for me. If listeners, that that whole um, blow your way to Brooklyn thing with Sarah, I, I had a, a woman who who literally blew her way to Brooklyn to blow me. It was a what? it was a big thing. Okay, um, and so I'm like arranging drivers to drive her different legs of the journey from her city to here, and she would uh-huh. thank each guy with a blowjob. Okay, just to get. Just to get to me. Hilarious. Yeah. So much fun. But like all the planning and like I'm putting out an ad and I'm screening yeah. guys for her and then I'm like telling them the rules and I'm all that. This is all made for weeks. I'm excited. I'm having weeks. Imagine getting your 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 clit rub for weeks yeah. just to finally have the thing. Yeah. So whether that's doing a bunch of insane emails for this arguably crazy person scenario or uh, it's shaving and showering all that. Mm-hmm. All the the stuff before you even got to the person. Mm-hmm. That's the hot part. That's for me. hot. Yeah. yeah. No foreplay. I mean, it's am- even like the beginning of a relationship when you're just flirting and like waiting for texts. Like that's amazing. Yeah. That like that build up is amazing, and that's the thing a, a lot of people throw away. Um, like I, I was on a radio show recently where they were congratulating me for coming, and right. and one of the older male comics was like, "Congratulations! Here's just one thing I have to say: is like girls just take so long in bed. Like, why don't they just? They, oh, it has to be twenty minutes. Why don't you just do the good stuff? I'm like, the buildup is the good stuff to us. It can't happen without yeah, it. Yeah, that's like tell him to jerk off for thirty seconds, and then tell him to jerk off for an hour straight. Yeah. Um. If you're me, sometimes two hours, because gosh, I can get lost in in the porn. Sphere. Really? Oh, it's so much. It's, you get a good stroke going, you start mm-hmm. being like, I can do this while answering some emails, because you can't disappear for two hours. No. You still have to get shit done. Yeah. But tell him to go jerk off and be like, you have to come in less than a minute. Mm-hmm. Go do it, and then say, okay, go. You uh, go stroke for an hour. Yeah. Massively different orgasms. Yeah. One's like, ugh, like unfulfilling and quick and yeah. dumb and the other one's like yeah yeah like just a, oh yeah. You know? yeah yeah that's i mean uh one of the things we talked about in the judaism episode and i don't like necessarily agree with this practice but it it's something that they do in the orthodox religion where you're not allowed to touch before marriage and so like you'll have a full relationship of not touching a person then when you finally do it's you touch their hand while you're being married or whatever and it's fucking electric like that's 2 years of fucking foreplay you know yeah. um and you got to finally touch you a hand you got to finally do a it a hand yeah and it's so special and it's so nice and there's so many i mean there's so many different types of orgasms there's skin orgasms there's all this stuff that like there's so much other stuff to build up than just like, all right, I'm going to DJ your clip really fast and then we're going to finish. <laughs> That's not that fulfilling. I once, I once came, speaking of different types of orgasms, I once almost came like Verge coming, uh, like a hypnotic audio recording I listened to mm. didn't touch myself. Unreal. There was just heavy breathing. That's awesome. And it was so fucking weird. And I was like, this is dumb. I'm going to try it. Turn the lights off. Put the thing on. Yeah. Uh, like I showered. I got clean. I just like laid on a night. I made my bed. Yep. Which I don't do. No, I read and- something that was like having a clean room is like very like conducive to having yeah. good sex. <laughs> yeah. And then I just did this heavy breathing for like 15 minutes listening to the thing. And then it's like telling you the energy and where to put it. And then it's like, and then she does a countdown to come. And yeah. I was like, oh, if the thing had gone on for 30 more seconds, I would have came never having touched anything. There's have so- you ever seen 40 Days and 40 Nights? Uh, I know that that's Josh what Josh Hartnett, Hartnett where he's, he can't cut. He's, he's trying not to, allowed to come for, for Lent. Yeah, for Lent. <laughs> and if he only knew, it's like, no, this your religion says you're not supposed to do this ever. at all. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> you're already doing it wrong. Um, No, but there's a scene where he's not allowed to, he falls in love with this girl and that's the part of the dilemma she really wants to fuck and it's within this 40 day period and she doesn't know that this bet is going on that era that he's trying because it's part of a bet obviously it's a 90s movie yeah. um <laughs> can't, like, it can't worked, do anything unless it's got a bet involved worked for she's all that right exactly yeah, yeah. what am i a fucking bet <laughs> um yeah so uh yeah he can't touch her or whatever so he makes her come by blowing an orchid 
like along her body. And it's the most, it's one of the most erotic things I've ever watched. And it's mm. one of the shittiest movies, but it's one of those movies that I used to watch when I was younger. And like, I didn't have orgasms, but when I would watch mm. that and a, a night's tale, really anything with a Heath, night's tale, anything with Heath Ledger, my hands would start to tingle uh. just the way that they do post orgasm now. Yeah. So I think I was like having these little mini orgasms just by like, like visual and like I told you, I'm very turned on by love. Yeah. Like any, I just got so, and I'd be overwhelmed and then my hands would be tingling or whatever. And then I'd, you know, stick my hand down there and try to do something. And I was like, oh, nope, the vagina doesn't work. All right, fine. Oh no. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, but yeah, he makes her come just by blowing an orchid on her. And oh. so I started watching all these videos because uh, my third week of the podcast, I had to watch porn. And mm. a lot of them were hands free coming. Mm. So, hands free coming. The porn was hands free coming. Yeah, girls just like breathing, just as you were doing, oh. or whatever, and then like squirting in their pants. Oh my! Okay. Yeah, you should look it up. It's on YouTube, porn, Pornhub, all those I tube sites. I will have to. I will yeah. have to. Uh, Remy, I don't. Do you have? Uh, do you have some time to do a little bit bonus? A little bonus episode? Mm-hmm. Okay, well, Patreon people, we're, uh, you can tune in later for that. But for now, where can people find you? Um, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Remy Casimir. I'm sure Billy will spell that out for you. K A S S I M I R. Yeah, you got yeah. it. And uh, uh, the podcast is How Come. It's on iTunes, and we also have an Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Um, and I'm going to make a Patreon soon for bonus content oh. because there's so much shit I want to share. That's just like, I'm like, this isn't a full episode, but it's so fucking interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Big fan of the Patreon stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So everyone look, like, go fall in love with her podcast there and then yes, tune in please. for that. And I'm sorry if I fat shamed anybody, but I was really fat shaming myself or, uh, or hate, that, hate shaming myself. That's usually what it is. It's like, hey, everyone, you should be body positive and you should yeah. be beautiful at any size except me. Fat shame me. Otherwise, yeah. I'll never work out. Yeah. Never <laughs> speak to me again. I'm disgusting. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> well, why don't you go ahead and say goodbye to everybody? Goodbye, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> Oh, wow. Did you enjoy my chat with Remy? Can you not get enough of her? Well, don't worry. There's even more Remy Casimir coming out next week for my $5 and up fan whores on Patreon. To get access to that bonus episode and oh so many others, head on over to patreon.com slash man podcast. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram at the Billy Uh, You know, I'm very annoyingly close to a couple of things. I'm like thir- I'm like 30 fo- Twitter followers away from 10,000. And on Instagram, I'm like 60 followers away from uh, from like my first thousand now that I have an Instagram. So, hey, you know, help get me over the hump, would you? You know, go give those a follow. Uh, go like the Man Whore Podcast Facebook page if you are a Facebook person. Uh, and even if you're not a Facebook person, would much appreciate that. We post uh, all sorts of interesting discussion topics, articles, memes. My intern Tori is really getting into the memes you can find that by searching Man Whore Podcast on Facebook. Uh, and as always, you're welcome to shoot me an email with your comments, your questions, your booby pictures to manwhorepod at gmail.com. Are dick pics welcome? Uh, you know, kind of. Uh, you know, I, I preferably, I'm not a big fan of dicks, but if you put my name on your cock in marker, not in fucking Photoshop, in marker, I'm going to enjoy that because, you know, my sexual orientation is my name on stuff. Next week, we've got a great episode with Emily Linden. Uh, She is the founder of The Unslut Project and the author of a heartbreakingly beautiful uh, book, Unslut. Going to learn more about her next week. But until then, everybody, stay slutty.